otherwise in cycling there was the Vuelta a Burgos now bit of a shame we I had the laptop up Benji did as well we were ready to watch the Lagunas deny a mountain top finish yesterday on stage three Mavi Garcia won uh solo 12 seconds out of Music Lippet won the bunch sprint so I, I called Lippet for the win but she won the bunch sprint most importantly, Demi Volring kind of fell through the eyes yesterday, losing, I think, 49 seconds on that third stage, which is something I didn't necessarily expect on that stage. And I think there were some crash in the race as well, but eventually the riders that were likely to do well on this mountain stage were still looking decent, except that Volring fell through the eyes. And I was like, okay, what does this mean? Like, is this like an outcome of her crash a week earlier that she's not 100% pulled through yet? Or not and perhaps we'd see that on Laguna Zanaya but we wouldn't see anything on Laguna Zanaya <laughs> yeah unfortunately there was no coverage we do know that ST Works put Kopecky in the breakaway I think there were some other riders in the break and then FDJ were pulling and then uh, ST Works according to the live tracker took it up on the climb we presume Demi Vollering attacked well because she must have because she won the stage but <laughs> when we we did see coverage from the fixed cams with about 300 meters to go we could see that juliette labou the young french rider on dsm yeah. 23 years old was not very far behind demi vollering and she was close on gc she hadn't lost that big amount of time on stage three same with Vita muzic on fdj and so Volering was clearly going to win the stage, but that gap was not huge. So Volering took the win, but Labou was able to take a big upset GC win, winning a World Tour GC race ahead of SD Works and Volering. Music even coming second on GC. She just got over the line enough to beat Volering. I think they're on the same time. With Krista Dobel Hickok on the EF Education Tibco Silicon Valley Bank, 33-year-old coming fourth good climber it seems she did really well on Laguna Stenaya 44 seconds with Ludwig fifth so I don't know Benji they had no Mormon following crashed but we saw last year I think AVDB and Van Vloot were another level above Vollering here this doesn't bode that well for SD Works mounting a challenge against Anamique in the tour not necessarily you're right and it really depends on whether this is just like well, she did like win this stage, Demi Volring, but I I don't feel like it's as strong as Van Vleuten can do and stuff like that. And it's a bit of a shame that Molman was not at this race because I would have loved to see how they would have worked well together. They probably would have won to this stage most likely, I would guess. And I would have loved to see who they would have played out as the final person and whether Molman would have survived stage three properly and therefore would have had a chance of winning this race for example and just the dynamics of that team just before the Tour de France Femme would have been intriguing to follow but there's so many things I I want to mention before the Tour de France Femme. Evita Muzic came back from her injury getting third on Laguna Zanaya looking really really good 37 seconds back and that means that she's going to be fighting with Labou most likely for that first French spot in the Tour de France Femme and I think Labou doing a top five at the Tour de France Femme was one of my hot takes at the start of the season. And I'm starting to get more and more belief in it as well because her season so far has been becoming better and better. I'm low-key becoming a bit of a fan of Juliette Labou. And I think it started off slow in Valenciana, but in the Hill Classic, she got fifth at Brabant, 11 at Amstel, 12 at LBL. That's looking pretty good. And then got better at Itzulia Women where she got fifth in the end in GC. Strong performance. And now winning this Vuelta Burgos, it's like, gradually moving up and gradually moving up and she's a real competitor for that top five in GC now I dare to say in that Tour de France Femme and I look forward to seeing that but also when it comes to like the rest of FDG for Muzic there like Grace Brown in this race she's been more of a, a domestique and attacking type for those stages earlier I've got a feeling that she's gonna be a pure domestique and stage hunter in the Tour de France Femme right? I think so, yeah. I mean, on Laguna Stenaya last year on the Pure Climbs, I think she came a minute nine behind Van der Breggen and Van Vleuten. The big shame for the race was Roy Acker's uh, not starting stage yeah. three, which we haven't updated you on. And as a reminder, she was the big contender for the stage win and probably GC. She might have, I think she would have beaten Labou. And if she didn't have the off day Vollering had, she would have won GC. Yep. She came 15 seconds behind Vollering last year when Vollering, I think, was on a better climbing level. 
uh, on Laguna Stanaya, fourth on the stage with the two big guns, uh, AVV and AVDB, ahead of her. And speaking of Muzic's improvement, she was 134 behind last year, which was 114 behind Vollering, and so much, much closer uh, this year. But, yeah, same with uh, Roy. Yeah, Roy Akers, big shame. Is it? I'm not going to say definitively that this was the best following because she crashed and we were surprised. I was surprised she yeah. started this race, so winning the stage. I mean, you can only do so much. We just a weird stage yesterday. But that was Burgos. A bit of a shame, again, that we've had two Women's World Tour races overlapping with the Giro and the lack of the live coverage in particular for the best stage today. Uh, whatever the reason was for that, I'm not sure, but it is a shame. Um, there's not really much more to say. Uh, on that one, what do you think? Yeah, who do you think FDJ should go for in GC? Music, right? Nah, uh, nah. I, I'm, I'm doubting. I'm honestly doubting because, like, I feel like Cecilio Triple with Cavalli and Music, all three being in that team, it wouldn't surprise me if Music actually has some kind of like GC goal to be that first French woman in the classification. But when it comes to Ludwig and, and Cavalli, I think. Ludwig is the likely uh, person in that team that will be hunting for the general classification. She's been relatively consistent in larger mountain finishes. I remember last year in Norway, she got relatively close, but she had that where she tried to follow Van Vleuten a bit too much to the point where she ended up just exploding in the last few kilometers and losing ground that way. I I thought it was between Utrecht Ludwig and Cavalli. This today's performance by Muzic doesn't necessarily change that for me but i think that team has a lot of issues in like combining leaderships we've spoken a lot about combining with triple Ludwig and cavalli and races and so on and that not necessarily leading to the best results because they end up if they end up in a group together they don't necessarily are com- they're not necessarily compatible in what they do in that group and i feel like that might backfire there but also like you can't just go to a race and have three GC riders that is so backloaded because that race, like I said, is backloaded, which means that you might only figure out on the last two days who of the three is actually your GC leader. And it might be too late by then to change the guard towards having one GC leader, you know? Because, like, let's say the first one drops, you only have, like, two riders left, and then you notice, okay, this one's the strongest, you only have one domestique left then on the final climb, for example. So I don't know, it's... I've got a feeling it's going to be a bit of a free-for-all at that team when it comes to leadership. I'd go for Music, but let Ludwig and Brown go for the stages in the medium mountain ones or the gravel one. Uh, I think Music pure climbing is better than Ludwig. Not by a huge amount, but she's improving fast and she's French. So there's that sort of added bonus as well. Um, I can't really remember any... Big long climbing performances. I mean, I she's think very. She did was it this year on Valenciana? I remember something at least where she performed just a bit better than a triple I think I could be the other way around. Was it this one? Yeah, uh, Vista Bella del Maestro, stage three of Valenciana this year. She ended up being uh, after Ludwig, third on the stage. Ludwig was second, and Van Vleuten was first, and that was a rather long climb at the end of a stage. So that's a performance I see there, but you're right. I don't remember as good as a, a long climb performances. And uh, I also think that she's going to be leader when it comes to the Giro Rosa. So combining two leaderships in those bigger races might not be on the menu for her. Yeah. SD works. They got many, many riders to go for. They have their own sort of issues, balancing those things as well with Kapeki. She can win almost any stage that isn't a pure mountaintop finish. And then there's Volering. Mulman seems to want leadership, so they also have a comp- complicated and delicate balancing act to do. Thanks, as always, to Zwift for supporting the Lantern Recycling podcast. As I've said, they make your online cycling training fun. They have for Benji and myself. If you want to check out Zwift, you can go to Zwift.com for a free seven-day trial through the link down below. And maybe follow them on Instagram as well to be kept abreast of the news happening with Swift, which there's some pretty big news coming this year with Swift. But that's all from us today. We've got the rest day tomorrow. Not too much racing on then, and we'll be back on Tuesday with 
Tour of Norway, quick recap, although I'll have main highlights on my on the Lanchon Rouge YouTube channel, so go and check them out, as well as, of course, the Africa stage, big mountain stage, 16 at the Giro. Thanks, as always, for listening. If you want to give us a review or a rating on podcast players, that helps a lot, or subscribing on YouTube, and we'll see you with the rest of the recap tomorrow. Ciao.